All right, guys, this is part three of our Bruzz Sprout tutorial. I'm um, going to go ahead and dive right into it. So, we're going to go ahead and go to this promotion area. From the promotion area, you have some options here. Now, I know I showed you the website earlier, but here's your thing you have your Buzz Sprout site, then you have um, on your own website, which is how to get your video and everything on there. Uh, get listed on iTunes, which is pretty awesome. Uh, other podcast directories. I found this to not be as. It's not the fact that it's not helpful, it's just that more people use iTunes and you're more than likely going to get discovered on that for any of these other um, offbeat uh, areas. If you want to really get some people going to your, your actual account, you might want to try like an RSS feed submission, um, which would take your podcast URL and submit it to like link lists and things of that nature, but that's just my own personal take on it. Um, from there, we can go click on your Buzzsprout site, and then you can actually pick how you want it to look. You have some themes you can use, or you can change the background image here and put whatever you want. You know, a little screen will pop up, good. And then your Buzzsprout URL, it could be um, podcast.whateveryourdomainis.com, or it can just be the name.buzzsprout.com. Um, if you know something about adding CNAME records, you can do this. Most, um, let's say for HostGator, if you have like a business account or a reseller's account, you can do this. If you have a uh, what they call a starter account, what most companies have, which is like you know two ninety nine, five dollars a month, you more than likely won't have this option. But if you have one of the more advanced accounts, I would suggest doing this um, just so it gives your website a little bit more professionalism because of the fact that you can tell people to go to whatever dot your domain dot com instead of going to the Buzzsprout site. Ultimately, what happens is that resolves back to the Buzzsprout site, but it just gives you that little extra flair. And honestly, this is a thumbs up. I have not seen any other podcasting um, company out there that allows you to do this kind of feature. And these are the, these are the little things, little bits and pieces that I found that really are great. Um, then they give you a preview of what the site looks like so you can change it dynamically and see what it will come out looking like. Um, from your own website, this is how your tag is going to look. So it says, oh, if you want the HTML and Flash player here, you just copy this page here. Or if you just want all episodes on your website with the HTML only, you can do this. Uh, if you want all, and this is more so an issue with mine, if you want all episodes in one large Flash player, then just, just do this little thing here and it'll give you that. Um, then there's advanced embedding tips from the advanced embedding tips put that down a little here and resize it here so you guys can see it Make it a little wider there we go um, here is how to do like certain little tips and tricks to get a little bit more out of there um, the thing is with this area here is that it's it's just teaching you little things that you can do. Um, more times than not, you really don't need these. These are for people who try to do more advanced stuff with their um, podcasting. Um, then the get listed on iTunes, they actually give you a nice little step-by-step -step guide on how to do it. It's fairly simple and it works. Um, and then after that, you can put your iTunes store URL here if you feel so inclined. Um, Actually, you know, it's, it, it's very sound. And here's here's my thing. Most people who provide you a service say, here's your service, now leave me alone. These guys give you so many tools that you can work with and it's not like it's hard to do and they spell it out for you. So that makes it even better. Uh, then you can go over here to statistics. The statistics area, it's not um, 100% and this is what I mean. So. Here's your statistical data. It tells you um, where the podcast has been uploaded, and then it tells you how much each one of them has done. It can only give you the last five episodes. It doesn't go back in time, so it's basically the most recent ones. And then it gives you, I want to say, your top 10 here. And then it gives you the average plays per episode is 28 here, the how many you get in the last seven days, last 30 days, last 90 days, and then since the time you moved over to their account. It also tells you if you're trending. If this is in the green, that's good. That means more and more people are listening to it and you're growing. 
if it's in the red, that means less and less people are listening. So they give you these little things you can use to help you out. Like this by far, um, you would you would expect uh, more. Like I could see people saying, oh, I want to search between a date range and see like which is my most popular episodes. But then they turn around and give you that information here. And you really don't need to care about your episodes that don't do well. So I can understand why they only give you the top 10. And then over here, you want to know what you're doing is this gives you the last seven days, 30 days, 90 days and total. So in the end, I know a lot of people complain about this is not enough data, but all this information here is more than enough. If you see your average plays go up from 15 to 28, you know you're getting better. If you see your trend like plus 11%, like you see here, uh, or plus 0.11%, uh, uh, then you know that you're doing better. If it says negative 15, then you know you're doing worse. So all in all, I think it's a really good site. Um, their support is very helpful, um, very friendly. I've never run into any issues with them. Uh, I tell all my clients who want to do podcasting, you know, it might cost you a little extra, you know, to pay per month, but you get a lot for your money. And here's the other benefit for it, guys. Um, let's just do the math, okay? I'm gonna do some math with you for one quick second. So we got 60 episodes here. Now, they're housing 60 episodes of this podcast. I'm gonna pull open the old calculator here. And we're gonna just say it's 60 episodes. It's 60 episodes times the average podcast is about 60 megs each you're looking at about 3,600 megabytes worth of data being taken up on your site um, that's about 3.6 gigs I know that doesn't seem like a large amount because I know a lot of you guys are like oh well I have an unlimited account well yeah you might have an unlimited account but Every time that file gets touched, your web host is dinging you for that file being touched. So here it is, if you have a very popular podcast, such as one like this, your web host will be very irritated at you because of the fact that you're streaming media from your site. And a lot of these uh, unlimited accounts, the one real limitation is you can't stream media from their sites. So this is your nice little workaround, keeps you safe, keeps you on that unlimited account so you don't have to pay all the big money for VPSs or um, dedicated hosting, and it works. And it works. And uh, I can say with over the four plus months of using them, I've yet to see the site go down. And the other added bonus, which I, I can't show you here because I don't have access to the email account. Once a application or once your uh, uh, podcast is uploaded, they have an application on their side that actually emails you and tells you your podcast is ready. Here are the ways you can embed it to your website. And it's great because you can upload it, move on with your day. And then you'll get an email to remind you to add it. I'm honest with you guys right now. I have not seen that ever. These guys have thought of everything. So go ahead and check them out. It's buzzsprout.com in case you haven't figured it out by now. Uh, works really great with WordPress and they have HTML functions. So even if you don't use WordPress and use like Blogger or some other blogging application or use some other application entirely or you code yourself, you can just copy and paste the HTML code and it works. It works like a champ. Anyways, guys, in all things, that is the end of our review of the Buzzsprout application. Make sure to go to odinspark.com to get more information on all the videos that you see here on our YouTube page. Make sure to like, share, and tell people about us on Twitter and Facebook. So this is Odin saying goodbye from odinspark.com.